All right, guys. Today here we got a Chevy Tahoe. Let's say the customer brought it in. Say he's got a vibration going on in the rear, kind of in the seat. Um, you kind of ask him some questions. You know, hey, did this just happen after somebody did a repair? Did you hit something? Did an accident? Um, kind of go through the normal questions, verify you know the customer's complaint, kind of which uh, diagnostic path you're going to take. Uh, you go for a test drive, and you notice, you know. As you're increasing the speed, you notice this uh, high frequency vibration. You kind of rule out that it's not a tire or wheel vibration. It's more of a driveline vibration. Uh, you don't hear any noises as far as like uh, you know, like a, any kind of clunk when you put it in reverse or into gear. You don't hear the typical U-joint squeak or chirp when you put it in reverse and back up. Um, but you definitely feel a driveline vibration. So you take it back to the shop. You raise it up on the hoist. Uh, this is on a two-post hoist. You can see tires are dangling. Uh, you check your. You're going to start with the drive shaft. Um, you know it's a big rotating tube hanging down, susceptible to uh, getting bent. Uh, somebody could have thrown a floor jack underneath, jacked it up at the wrong spot, could have easily bent it. So you do a quick visual inspection. You're going to look for like any of these weights. Um, this is a weight when the drive shaft was balanced. They attach this to there. Um, sometimes they get knocked off. This one looks like it's intact. It's in place. You rotate it around. You look the whole shaft over for any kind of bends. Um, bends or dents or any weights missing off. If that all looks fine, check your U joints really well. Um, check for any play movement up and down. You check. For right there, you took check for any kind of twisting, noticeable play in the U joint. And the other thing you really want to check for is back here in the U joints where you have that grease seal. You want to check right there to make sure that there's no rust uh, dust coming out of there. What happens is when that seal fails and you end up with water and lack of lubrication, the grease flies out, you get water and stuff in there, you get metal and metal contact becomes a rusty situation and that U-joint seizes inside inside this housing, inside that bearing cap and then you end up with a vibration. Um, it might not particularly be loose or have any play to it but it can be seized up and tight. So that's another thing you can do as far as an inspection is you can remove this drive shaft, check all, all the bearing caps and all the joints for, for free, uh, freeness to make sure that they turn freely, they're not binding. Um, or completely seized up. If all that looks good as far as like personal, you know, just a visual inspection, go ahead and grab your dial indicator and find a solid mounting surface to mount this on. And we're going to check for uh, drive shaft run out. What happens is Uh, say the customer maybe just had a U-joint replaced in this Chevy Tahoe and the person at the previous shop was maybe taking a hammer and beating on the drive shaft. Maybe it was that U-joint was really stuck. Maybe they heated with a torch. Well, now what's happened is they've bent one of these ears or both of these ears on the drive shaft. And now that's going to give us a run out on our drive shaft. And that's going to be like an out of balance and it's going to give you a vibration. So, with our dial indicator put into place, we'll zero it out. Put our needle on zero. And we're going to rotate this 360 degrees. We're going to see what our maximum run out was. Looks like we had about 15,007 inch of run out. Not terrible bad. Um, check your service manual though, just to double check to make sure. Um, you're within specifications. You could check this at numerous places. Um, I would also check it up by the transfer case or transmission output shaft. You could check the runout up there because sometimes it might not show up down here and it could be a lot worse towards the front of that drive shaft. If your runout looks good, um, the other things that could be driveline related as far as vibration wise are angles. Um, you need to check for any recent uh, modifications to the vehicle as far as like lift kit possibly or maybe some new control arms, maybe a new rear differential. 
maybe some new springs, maybe you got broken springs. Any of these things could affect the uh, driveline angles and once you change those angles you're gonna you can end up with a vibration and problems. If these vibrations are not taken care of they can eventually down the road they can lead to damage in the rear end as far as bearings. Um, they could do some damage to the drive shaft, yokes, transfer case bearings, a um, whole lot of havoc. So these vibrations really need to be taken care of. As far as checking angles you can download, um, your phones have apps, you can download, they got angle meters and stuff on, on your phones, uh, protractor, or you can pick up one of these little midget, uh, midget, <laughs> mini protractors, not too terrible expensive, they got a nice little hold button that'll hold the uh, measurement for you, so if it's hard to see, you can take it, press hold, works pretty nice. Now when we're checking these angles, um, we want to check the drive shaft tube itself and then we want to check the output shaft of the transmission or transfer case and then the angle of the pinion and the rear differential. Now the output shaft and the pinion should be parallel to each other. They can, one can be lower and one can be higher but they have to be parallel. They can't be at a different angle. Because when that happens, then we have a different angle on one U joint versus the other, and then we end up with a vibration. So this angle, this angle of this joint needs to be the same as the other joint, and they will cancel out any vibrations that they have. So to measure this angle, you're going to measure this drive shaft, and we usually refer to downward or upward angles. So we can look at the side of the vehicle and at the front of the vehicle, if we're looking at that drive shaft or the angle of these shafts coming down from front to back, if it's a downward angle, we're calling it downward. If it's upward, it's an upward angle. So with our gauge on here, we're going to measure this angle of this drive shaft. Oops. Uh, we're just, a, just about at 12 degrees downward. Now sometimes it can be hard to get a good accurate reading on the pinion. They do make an adapter that will go right into the cap on the U-joint and that would give you about the best angle. Um, uh, we got about eight and a half. So we got about what, three and a half, three and a half degrees of difference there. But our biggest thing is we want to look at that angle there. Which is about eight and a half. Like I said, that might be not totally accurate without having going right on the bearing cap. Sometimes you can take the drive shaft out and you can go that route too. So then we will go up to the transfer case output shaft. And we will take a reading of that shaft right there and we'll see what that angle is. That's about five, let's see if you can see it. It's about five degrees of downward angle. Our drive shaft angle should be the same as what we had at the rear. We still got we got about 12, 12 degrees on the shaft. Alpha shaft we have about five and a half, so it's about six degrees. Let me remeasure back here at the pinion. There we 
we've got about 12. Twelve and maybe about eight. So we got about four degrees there. And about nine. This will definitely be this one there's not much of a flat surface on this yoke. This one would probably be a good candidate to remove the drive shaft to get a perfectly accurate reading. Now the one thing with measurements that we're taking right now though that you might notice is that we are on a two post hoist suspension is hanging which is going to give you a bad reading uh, because this is not how the vehicle is running down the road but this is a perfect example of how a lift kit or putting blocks in new springs modifications to the vehicle can affect your driveline angles. So we have about three degrees of difference between our pinion shaft angle and our output shaft angle of the transmission transfer case. Now mind you, that is at a suspension hang and suspension dropped. So that is the amount of change with the upper and lower control arms having different lengths. That's how it's changing that angle as suspension drops. Now that would be enough to probably cause a little bit of concern, um, but like I said, suspension is hanging so that's not an accurate reading. I'll go over to the, this other truck frame we have that's on, on the ground, curb height, and we'll measure the angles on that one and we'll look and see how they compare to the suspension hanging.